Dude, show it to me. I'll show you mine. Show me yours. You've been investing for 35 years. Let me see just 20 years of your performance. If you're gonna say something that bold, you gotta back it up, dude. So I'll back mine up because I'll show you my returns. I'll show you my buildings. You can touch it, feel it, hug it. I wanna touch and feel it and hug your statements, man. If you can give me those returns at whatever percentage, I'll invest in you. And I'll get more people to invest in you. If you can show me those, those returns, show it to me. Like this is my first time doing a YouTube, uh, these YouTube videos and look at these comments and they're, they're actually pretty rude. Some of these, some of these guys will say, oh, I must have some wealthy family or whatever. Let me talk about that. I grew up in Scarborough, okay? Scarborough is, you can look it up, but I grew up in Malvern. My parents came from Hong Kong way back in 1973. Not that much money. My parents uh, was educated. My dad was an engineer, but he came here, he was a draftsman. My mom worked at Leech Videos, troubleshooting motherboards. Um, so middle class, semi-detached home in Scarborough, Malvern, whatever, just normal, regular people, right? So my parents didn't have any money. My grandparents, um, they pushed a dim sum cart until they're like 60 years old, earning minimum wage. What is up guys? So we're just following Casey right now to the 65 unit building. I thought what better opportunity now that my hands, I have some feeling back in them because it is cold, it's Canada, but I want to talk to you guys. So Casey kind of touched upon it just a little bit in that video and I'm going to include it. But at the end of the day, what you guys need to realize when you're watching these videos, these are legitimately real people. Like they don't necessarily want to put themselves out in front of strangers in the internet just to have jerks or trolls hit them up and make complaints. And I get it. I know some of you are frustrated because you look at someone like Casey who's extremely successful, very well put together, and it's hard to necessarily envision ourselves becoming Casey. I get it. It's really difficult. But the thing is, by having those limiting beliefs, by being like, oh, he must have been lucky, he must have had family money, you know, he must have never earned it a day in his life, that's, if you believe that to be true, it's going to be true about yourself as well. And so it's really important that you guys like sit down and really listen to what he's saying, listen to the minutia, the facts, and even the nonverbal things he's saying. He knows exactly what he's talking about. If he came from family money, he would not know all these tips and tricks that I'm like hanging off of every word on so anyways if you guys got value from this video smash that like button and if you watch this video all the way to the end you owe it to Casey to leave a nice comment I want you guys to leave a nice comment for Casey so that not only for Casey's sake but for future guest sakes because if they come on and watch these videos and they see tons of hate in the comments and I don't like to leave comments because I also don't think that's a good thing either but we need more positivity. Get in those comment sections, share your positivity. Let's give Casey a huge thank you because he's changing my life, he's changing Adam's life, and just thanks again, Casey. So here are the, here are the washing, uh, here's the laundry area, the washing machines and the, and the dryers. It used to be only a pair here, and Coinomatic used to be here. So when, when I bought this building, uh, Coinomatic is usually in here, the reason why I get rid of them is that, again, they take about 50% off the top line. So it's very expensive for an owner to, a small owner like myself, uh, to absorb that. I always buy used um, and get my own in here. So this building makes a shitload of money on laundry. Okay, and you'll see my other building. Uh, it's a little bit different, layout's a little bit different. Not as much, uh, but good money as well. And usually in all three build, like this one, my Preston property, on Moore Street, my Hyman, and then my Elgin Street. In total, I'm looking about $3,000 a month, just in coins. So, so just in coins. So people will say, why am I spending whatever, my, my day gathering $50 or $20? No, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a significant. So that $3,000, anywhere from about $25 to $3,000, is significant enough that I don't want somebody else to count the money because that money will be, go, like that, it will be missing really, really quickly, yeah. right? So that's something that you, as an owner have to have control so your top line you control that so once you get that money all the other stuff when you pay it's a lot easier right so rent nobody no nobody accepts cash okay so my superintendents will say hey okay i got cash from this person no no, no. what happens if that superintendent got jumped right mm -hmm. he lost the money he spent the money Right? Yeah. And in my earlier days, I had that happen once where he got robbed. Yeah. Yeah. And how do you prove that? Right? He got robbed and like, dude, that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So you make it very easy for a tenant to pay. It could be pre-authorized, um, 
I don't like e-transfers, but sometimes e-transfers is a must. Uh, let's say I have all my mortgages with a bank. It's BMO, and there's no bank beside it but TD. Open up a TD account there. Get them to deposit in the TD and wire it over to your BMO. Right? It's, all, it's as simple as that. Give them the account. They have to put it into the account. They, they take pictures and so on and so forth. That You make sure that you get your money. Right? If it's not on the first, then you issue out that N4 the next day. The second or the third, the N4 gets sent out. After that, those 20 days, then the L1 gets sent out. So don't, don't, do not delay on those, um, those notices and make sure that the tenants know that you're on track of these things. Okay, so going back, this, this is a laundry. I put these ones in. Um, $1,200 for pair, washer and dryer, so $600 each. Uh, we just have some issues. We just put them in. Um, literally about a week ago, two weeks ago. So the ventilation is not very good and we're trying to work that out because it's not venting properly. There's always issues. There's always issues with buildings, um, but it's always manageable. You have to be able to get your contractors to you know, troubleshoot things and do things properly, right? Um, but again, so this, this you know, makes money. Um, always buy it. My, my sort of my, my management office is right there. People can drop off checks and I have a camera right there. That you can see this see this room. So, any tips yeah. for people that are maybe new to landlording? N4s, L1s. What's yeah. the best way to actually start learning about that stuff? If you really want to, it's how do you learn about it? Um, seriously, you can go to the court, right? Sit there. That's free. Um, when I first started, I had to do the eviction. I sat there and I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I kind of sat there for the day, right? Go through it, see, see what other landlords are doing, what's good and bad, right? See what paralegals, right? You can talk to them, you can pay for it. Um, but the best thing is that you guys can just sit there. That's free education for you. Um, I always call the landlord tenant board's uh, uh, toll-free number. And I call and I go, hey, um, I'm uh, Steve Lambrinos. I'm a tenant. Um, I'm being evicted by my landlord because he's a dick. Uh, but I'm the, I'm the tenant. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you don't, you don't have to necessarily call in saying that you're the landlord. I have this problem with this tenant. Call in saying that you're the tenant. See what kind of advice that, you, that they provide to the tenant. So there's a little nugget that's for you guys, huge, yeah. right? So that's what you have to do uh, on, a, you know, on the court side, on the LTB side, right? Um, oh, and if you are looking for, let, let's go back to the building now. Oh, let, me, let me touch upon uh, sort of top level and trying to funnel my, my way down. So before some people are talking about, um, you know, before even getting into real estate businesses, right? There's one gentleman that was talking about uh, trading, uh, making more income than properties. That's cool. I, uh, I think it was Patterson, Dave or Steve Patterson, right? And he was saying that his uh, return was a lot better um, doing trading and he talked about hyperinflation 11 percent uh matt smiling right now i was like wow that's uh and so casey it's uh um when you refi my algin property because i what happened was that i refinanced it just in november okay but i didn't do it three years i did a 10 year all right and i fixed my interest at three and a half percent Oh wow. Yeah. That's fantastic. So I mitigate that risk, right? So I did a five year with community trust and these, there's another comment stating that um, it's too good to be true that I'm doing it 35 years, right? Mm -hmm. And it's CMHC. You have to do your research, all right? So this, these two companies, go, go and co contact these, th these two companies. It's called MPAC, M-P-A-C, probably heard of them, yep. First National. They offer that, CMHC loans at 35 years. So if I can find it, short little Chinese guy can find it, you can find it too. It's not, seriously, you gotta, you gotta network, you gotta find it, you gotta pick up the phone call, pick up the phone and call people, right? Your A-level banks may not have those, you know, those, uh, those different types of uh, packages or lending, whatever. It's like, it's, it's kind of creative, right? But they don't have the CMHC. So these are uh, second tier, they would have it. So look, look out for them. So MPAC and CMHC. Um, they do have the 35 years. So what I did was that, listen, I had the five years at Elgin, then I push it out. What I do is that you can do this. Very, 
It's very normal. This is not rocket science. You push it back out to 10 years. So I paid off, let's say my mortgage is at 2.5 million, right? I bought it for 3.15. My mortgage is at, let's say 2.5. Now, instead of that 20 years, because I paid off five years, I'm gonna talk a little slower now. I'm gonna push it back out to 35 years. That drops my payments down, does it not? So when I talk about pushing it out, this is what I'm talking about. So from the 20 years, because I paid off five years, normally it's 25 year M, amortization. Now it's at 20. Now I'm gonna go back to MPAC and say, hey, let's push it back out to 35 years. What is that gonna to do to my monthly payment uh, uh, costs? It's gonna drop that, right? Now I cash flow higher, make sense? So now my cash flow is higher. Now I can feed my family every month, right? I don't need $3 million after 20 years. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't need cash flow after 20 years. I paid off five years. There's another 20 years. I don't need, what is it? Uh, uh, that extra uh, 17, 17, $10,000 or when my mortgage is done, let's say everything, I don't need 15,000. Okay, I'm grossing 27. I don't need 15,000 each and every month. After 20 years, I don't need that. Right? I need it now. I need my 10,000 now. I need this one. I need like uh, maybe it's cash flowing about 15 or 20,000. It's about 15 to 20,000. I don't need. I don't need more later. I don't need 30,000. I need 40,000 later. I need it now, right? Because I have to live now. I still have to eat from now to my 20 years. So that's that's something that strategic that uh, investors will do. So going back to this uh, Patterson person, right? Listen, if you can make more, that's amazing. I will invest in you. All right, but if you're saying that hyperinflation is 11%, that's good forecasting. You, you might be right or you might be wrong. But dude, if you've been investing, because I looked at your, your, your website or, or one of your videos, you said you've been investing for 35 years. Let me see just 20 years of your performance. Dude, show it to me. I'll show you mine, right? Show me yours, all right? So if you can show me on your portfolio and your statements that you've been climbing from 100,000, two, three, four, four, to $20 million over the last 20 years, dude, I'm gonna invest in you. But you, if you're gonna say something that bold, you gotta back it up, dude, back it up. So I'll back mine up because I'll show you my returns. I'll show you my buildings. You can touch it, feel it, hug it. I wanna touch and feel it and hug your statements, man. If you can give me those returns at whatever percentage, and you can predict, when you predict something like that, so you can predict the 2008-2009 financial uh, uh, downfall and you made money on it, dude, you should be on Bay Street or on Wall Street, all right? But I know you're smart, okay, because you kept all those statements for 35 years. Show me just 20 years. The last 20 years, I'll invest in you and I'll get more people to invest in you if you can show me those, state, those returns, show it to me, all right? So let's, let's move on. I just love it. So you gotta show me those returns. But now, if you're, I looked at McDonald's because I want to do I want to be a McDonald's operator. I want to be a Tim Hortons owner. That's what I want to do way back before my Elgin property. So before that, looked at that. I didn't even get in. I don't know why they didn't select me because I actually don't, I had the money, but I didn't have an operating partner. I was, I was looking for an operating partner because I had some buildings, but I couldn't find an operating partner. So look, so this is high level. Are you gonna go do real estate? Are you gonna trade? Are you gonna buy a franchise? So on and so forth. Because I like systems because I'm not, dude, I like, everything's everywhere. It's hard for you to, to do work your systems, right? Or to make your system. So McDonald's for me was good because I had a young family. Uh, I just need an operating partner. I had the money, but I didn't have an operating partner. Uh, but that fell through and then I just got Elgin. Um, but yeah, high level. If real estate's not for you, that's fine. That's cool. You're not gonna hurt my feelings. Come down. Uh, what type of geographic location? So what I did was I did Toronto, uh, Triplex. Then I did London because cash flow was strong. Appreciation was low. Your capital appreciation was low in London mm -hmm. uh, relative to other areas. Hey, you have to compare. Then I hit Hamilton. When I hit Hamilton, uh, I bought three buildings in a rough neighborhood uh, near Main and Gage. And I, I lost a shitload of money. You can ask me what shitload means later, but a shitload of money. And I actually paid my investors back. They're my friends. They're actually from my church and I lost that money. I know you're not Christian, Matt, so don't worry. Uh, you don't hurt my feelings. So um, I lost a shitload of money in Hamilton in three buildings, two eights, one twelve. All right, so 
I cut my losses, I was bleeding about $9,000. I sold my RSPs to cover heat, hydro, whatever, right? For, for those buildings and they were like scamming me. So I lost money in Hamilton. Um, I quickly sold those, cut my loss, I lost about, that shitload was 400K. I lost two, my investors lost two. I paid them back, um, they're 200,000. Some of my friends said, you're crazy. My, one of my lawyer friends said, uh, from high school, he said, you're crazy, dude. Um, but whatever, it's like, you can always earn money, right? But sometimes the friendship, you don't wanna lose. And reputation. And reputation, right? Listen, I can always make the money, all right? Nothing wrong with losing a little bit, uh, keeping the friendship, and earn it back somewhere else, okay? But I'm not gonna lose a friendship over, over some money, okay? Mm -hmm. So I did that, I kept my old uh, holdings, I continued to work, my wife was working, she's a CA, um, and then we, you know, saved up and we paid that off, right? Um, and then fast forward it, uh, having family, four kids, um, 2013 rolled around and then started investing in more. Okay, that's when I, the, the, the 2004 to 2013, 14-ish, uh, I was working for Brookfield, Cap Reit. I was a director there, um, worked for a whole bunch of uh, boutique property management companies, I have to say 360 Community Management, what good friend Chris Anapas worked there. Um, he's part of like ACMO and stuff. I learned a lot from everywhere I went, I learned a lot. Um, so this is just the property, property management side of it. And working for companies is easy, okay? Because they have their own systems. When you come into, come into a property management companies, they have their own little systems, they have their own contractors. Um, the ARAP, so easy, okay? When you come into something like this, even if you're in the property management business as an, as an employee, getting into something else on your own, you have to find people, work with people, or uh, get something here or there and then make your own system, right? So this is my system of, of, of working. Um, and you know, there's, there's a lot to it. I just don't know what you guys wanna know and you know, it just sort of comes out as, oh, this is what I do and this is what, this is what worked in the past, right? So, but yeah, that's my sort of taking, going through that geographic location, going back to Hamilton, uh, London, you know, that's what I did for student housing. Um, then I hit Barry as well. This is before actually my, Ham my Hamilton buildings. I hit Barry. I did rent to owns there. So I touched upon rent to owns. The only thing is that what I didn't like about rent to owns is that you have to sell it, right? You have to get rid of it. Um, nothing wrong with it. Some people are doing very, very well in rent to owns. The only thing is that the model didn't work for me because now I'm constantly buying, right? <clears throat> and you always want to be able to uh, hold your properties as long as possible. What I say, here's my rule of thumb is you're gonna hold for at least five years. Don't, don't, don't take any of the cash flow out. When you reach that five years, you, you assess it, okay? You can refi it, you can do something or, um, but you'll know, you'll know that business because you're gonna make or break it within five years. After that five years, the 10 years time period, you're gonna make a shitload of money. That 10 years, once you get over that hurdle, so you're Matt, you're 33? Yeah. So Adam, you're about 24? Yeah. Okay, that's amazing. Think about 10 years from now. You'll be 43, you'll be my age, right? Yeah. You'll be a, I'm just joking. I, no, I, I love the fact that you're exactly 10 years older because it's just so much yeah, fun for yeah. when I'm thinking like, who do I want to be 10 years from now? Yeah, you right, want to so. be a short Chinese guy, right? <laughs> so, so listen, that's what it is, 10 years. So Adam, dude, he's 24, he's 34, he's gonna be kicking ass, all right? Um, I didn't have anybody to say, hey, what should I do or whatever, and, but I just quickly learned, right? You network, you, I was in property management, I take a look at what Capri did, I ask contractors how much they, you know, how much you're getting paid for this, right? So you quickly ask. You can, you can learn really quickly in a company because they streamline it so easily for you, right? You can ask them, hey, how much is the paint? How much is this or how much is that? 